MBT came up just short in Illustriad Season 1, finishing in second place, and now he's back for Season 3, representing the Water Pantheon and Poseidon. Surprisingly, his opponent Matt O'Shea, previously a highly touted watercaster himself, changed pantheons and is representing Demeter and Earth for the entire season. Don't forget to back Alestral's Clash, available now on Kickstarter. You do not want to miss it. I don't know about y'all, but I want to see what these casters have brought for their decks for week one of the Illustriad. Joseph, you've come up short the last two seasons. How are you going to change the tides this time? Guess who's back, 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 back again, again, again. What's up, it's your boy, MBT, and I've got something to prove this season. I've been runner-up, top four, second fiddle in these a little too often. I'm looking to get that Divine Rune, and there's only one way to do it. Make it to the top. I'm proud to be representing the Water Pantheon, and I think our team is absolutely stellar. But the one Pantheon I'm a little scared about is Earth, and it's also my first round of matchup. I'm also playing against a really good person. Like, where's my freebie, you know? So here's the list I'm bringing to the first week. It is unsleeved. I prefer to play Elestral's Raw. Well, I think the water has a lot of options at its disposal. For this first week, I'm going to keep things simple and play a deck that was really good against Bean Soldier TV in the finals of a couple of Daybreak events ago. I'm talking about Water Fives. Uh, my Wet Fives list is a little different than uh, what you might be familiar with. We've, of course, got the three Astrabbit. I'm playing three main deck Jolton. I think it's pretty likely that uh, I'm going to be playing against Matt O'Shea doing some sort of Weather War stuff with Stadium Runes. So we are playing the one Atlantis to pair with these. We're also playing two copies of Boom Bat. I think this card is really good in general because a lot of the time... Uh, the Earth Nexus gameplay kind of revolves around like protect the castle on an Equilinx, and I think there's a non-zero chance that the play is going to be playing Wasp Ivy, and this card is also fine against that. Uh, we've got three copies of Galaxy, just a really powerful card. Speaking of really powerful cards, three copies of my main man, Edward, and of course, Foamy pairs really well with Edward. I'm playing three Foamy maxing out despite the fact that I think the card is only okay, because I think Earth specifically has a tough time dealing with it, especially with fewer copies of Earthquake. If I see Spectaris, these are getting all the way out. Uh, we're playing one Mustation, two Mustation to get off the Foamies, and then our court-ordered copy of Poseidon. Uh, there's still some fun stuff we can do with Poseidon, like uh, Nexusing to um, a uh, Elestral in order to get a little more aggro that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. We've got three Tsunami, unsurprisingly. I think one of the biggest reasons to be playing Water, one Earthquake, uh, two Nectar of the Gods, one Resting on your Laurels, three Ambrosia, and then we've got three Gorgon's Gaze, three Shield of Achilles, and three Poison-Tipped Arrow. Uh, I think uh, most of the ratios in here are pretty normal, pretty standard. There's some stuff we aren't playing just because the boy math and the spirits is pretty bad. Let's go there now. Of course, we need to be playing 11 copies of Leviathan. I think we're on 12, but it's been a while since I uh, counted. Uh, we've got, I think, four or five Zapter, five it is, and then, of course, the two Tyratlas in order to cast one Earthquake. But you bet your bottom dollar I will absolutely uh, be expending those if I don't see that Earthquake in my opening hand. Uh, in the side, we've got some interesting plans going on. Um, I'm playing three copies of Veritaqua, if I think it's necessary to come in. It's a little self-explanatory what this is used for. Divine Blessing, I think there are certain scenarios where I would want this, um, but does seem a little suspect, especially with, like, one Poseidon. Uh, we are playing two copies of Flurmine and three Cryoblast. This is for a great deal of things, but mostly uh, if I see Wasp Ivy. And then if uh, our opponent is playing a deck that cannot get aggressive, something that loves to dirtle, I have no problem boarding into two Aphoros, and to Dratagua and then just playing like a more water Nexus style of gameplay. Finally, I know that a lot of Earth Nexus relies on having kind of an active Demeter, so if I see that, I will be boarding into Thunderbolts, which is going to put a real strain on our boy math. But I'm feeling good in general, happy to be back. Let's get Elestri adding. It looks like MBT is bringing a hybrid Thunder and Water package, relying heavily on Atlantis and the power of Galaxy, Mustation, and Eddie to keep the Earth Beatdown package at bay. Matt O'Shea may be a traitor to the Water Pantheon, but Green looks really good on him. Let's see what he's rocking with his Earth Beatdown deck. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back into the Illustriad season at number three. I am Matt O'Shea. Today, I'm facing off against the one and only MBT, Joseph Rothschild, and he is on Water. We are on Earth. So we have a very classic matchup going on over here. And honestly, I feel really good about this because Earth plays really well into water. So we're going to see what we can do. I'm not too worried about all the different decks he could bring, whether it's a Chronodile deck or a deck with like the Trident of Poseidon to lock me out, Krakatuga, uh, just water fives in general, or even just good stuff. I feel really good about my chances, even if he plays the new Draking deck, which I think has been very popular as well. But that being said, we are on Earth, like I said, and here's going to be our list. We are starting off, of course, with three copies 
of Equilinx, just a fantastic card, the best Nexus card in the game. We also are on three copies of Viscerous, fantastic Earth Beater, gets to a five stat really quickly and then just swarms the field really well. We're on two Mudlet. This is a suspect decision. I really like going to three, but we're sticking to two for the time being because it, it's good in the matchup, just not amazing in the matchup and it also doesn't come up as often in this specific list that i'm playing that we can use the effect as often as we want because i'm not playing bloom i'm also playing two copies of moss station just a really big body uh six attacker just once you summon it out which is great you can use altar of stars to boost its attack to also put it back to attack position which is great to force uh really weird plays on the opponent's end really solid this is our earth lineup we have 10 earth elestrals we're also rocking with three Astrabbit and three Elichik as our uh, Thunder Spirits, or Thunder Elestrals rather. These are great. Astrabbit is the best card in the game in my opinion. You're able to just dig your deck, find a five defense guy as well. It's fantastic. We also have Elichik, which is going to search for our Demeter, which is still really, really strong. And we want to make sure we have access to that because we want to turn our Equilinx online. I'm also playing three copies of the new Spectaris. This card is amazing, especially into a water deck, where if I just go and attack into something like a Galaxy or a Foamy, I can essentially turn off their abilities and make it so that I can just beat over them pretty effectively, which is really good. And this card alone makes water decks, specifically utilizing something like Galaxy, a lot less powerful, so I want to have it in my main deck. That's going to be it, though, for our Elestrals. We have 19 Elestrals, so it's plenty of guys in the deck. I'm also playing now three altar of stars which is incredible in this list such a strong card in this list so i really want to max out on it i'm also playing three copies of gorgon's gaze the best rune counter rune in the game we also have three poison tipped arrow and three shield of achilles so i have 12 counter runes right now i have to max out on these because i can't play tsunami his deck is going to be all waters tsunami does nothing against them and i can't have that happening I'm also playing three Ambrosia to start off our uh, Invoke Rune lineup. We have the one Earthquake and Resting, the newly limited Earthquake and Resting. We're playing two copies of Demeter, which is searchable from our Elichik. Really solid card, allows us to boost our own guys, beat over things, just a fantastic Nexus Bank as well. And then we have two Foloi Forest. This is here as a way to win the Stadium War. It gives us another way to Nexus, which is also really nice, and just get slightly bigger than what his guys are going to have. So that's going to be our 40 card main deck. Really happy with the way the deck looks. It's super clean, super concise. I feel good about it. Moving on, though, to our spirit deck, we have 12 copies of Teratlas. This card is, or this, this rune is, the spirit, wow, is incredibly important for us. Uh, we have pretty much everything in our deck uses these spirits, which is really good. We have four Zapter, which is here for our Elchick and our um, and our, and our Astrabits. And we have two Owloon, specifically for the Spectaris. And we also have two Leviathan. This is here in the main deck for two reasons. First of which, we have a spicy tech in the side deck, which could work out really well. But we also want to make sure that if I need to enchant something with the Water Spirit, I can definitely do so. And if I ever need to Nexus the Water Spirit off of one of our guys to another guy, I can do so with Altar of Stars, which can come up really, really clutch. So that's going to be our 20 Spirits. Moving on to our side deck, we have three copies of Galaxy. This is the tech here. If I can enchant Galaxy correctly and he has a Galaxy on his side of the field as well, then I can reverse the swap, which is really nice. They're going to go back to a 2-5 and I can then crash over his Galaxy with something else. My Galaxy will then be at 5 and I'm good to go from there. Three copies of Boom Bat is incredible, just great spot removal, normal cast it, disenchant, pop a card, really nice. And we have three Dense Fog as well. This paired with Boom Bat outs practically everything in the game. We want to have access to this. We also have two Vertolith here. This is there mostly for burn. It's also really good to get just a big body on the field. It's a seven attacker or seven defense rather. And it also gives me some recovery, which is really nice. And then we have two Owl Loon for when we side in our Dense Fogs and two Zapter for when we side in our Boom Bats. That's going to be it. That's the list here. I'm really happy with the way it looks. It's super concise, like I said. And I just feel like it's going to do really well in this week's matchup. So hopefully we can get the win. But again, we're here having a good time and uh, we'll see what we can do. So guys, thanks for watching it. Let's go ahead and jump into the class. I tell you what, that Spectorus is going to be a card to watch. It can really shut down Galaxy and Foamy, two really important Elestrals on MBT's side. If Equilinx and Demeter can combo, Matt O'Shea is going to wreak havoc in the back row. These two casters are all connected in this best of three clash where they're going to be throwing down to advance to our top 16 casters. And it looks like MBT starts this one off with a classic Astrabbit play. That's going to give him the top three cards of his deck and add one to his hand. Poseidon is pleased and so is his Leviathan. 
a really strong start there as these two casters have proven themselves to be two of the best players in the Illustriad from season two. Very, very epic showdown here. And of course, if you're not familiar with the rules, you haven't been keeping up so far, these casters have an open format to build decks however they want. However, there's two simple restrictions. You must use at least one copy of your designated divine and you cannot use any other divines. And you must have 11 spirits of your 20 spirits representing your elemental pantheon. So MBT has at least 11 Leviathan water spirits and Madoche is forced to have at least 11 Taratless earth spirits. MBT finishes his turn with two face down runes as Madoche expends the draw and sets a back row of his own, deciding to load it up big time with four runes set face down on those gorgeous Illustriad season three play mats. Deadlocked here at 1919. And of course, a change up from previous seasons. These are best of three clashes, which means casters have to win two out of the three to advance to the next round. And the loser gets sent to the loser's bracket, which doesn't have nearly as cool prizing as the winner's bracket does. MBT throws his galaxy into attack position from hand, a powerful threat. Again, we talked about Spectrus in the pre matchup here being a really crucial Elestral, but he's actually gonna choose to put that rabbit in attack as well and attack for two spirits of damage into Matt O'Shea. I think if you have the back row to protect your rabbit, it's worthwhile. Galaxy's a super big threat anyway here with five attack because of its effect. And one of the fancy things I love that you can do here on MBT side is you can Nexus a water spirit onto a Strabbit from like a Poseidon and you can make him a five attacker as well, which is pretty wild when Galaxy is live. I love those tournament pack Viscerous from Matt O'Shea, the new Earthcaster. That Viscerous is just beautiful, but it's gonna be met with a Tsunami, which is a really good ally of Astrabit, and probably why MBT felt it was safe to put his Rabbit out there in attack position. Rabbit should have changed the defense there uh, on that Tsunami, but it's, it's likely to be irrelevant. He's gonna have a shift there. I think that that was him shifting it to catch up to the rules, but he does draw for his turn. Tsunami, a big play there, and he's going raw as he said, no sleeves on his cards. I tell you what, I actually just had some buddies over, and we were playing uh, with some of the Moonrise cards, new Moonrise cards, and we were doing some sleeveless Moonrise, and it was a lot of fun. I actually quite enjoyed that. Uh, we got the Foamy here from MBT. It does get affected by the Galaxy, making it a three attacker, which does allow it to hit over the Viscerous, and it's kind of a feels bad if you're Mad O'Shea, because you really don't want to shield a Foamy, but you can Gorgon's Gaze the Galaxy, which means Galaxy can't attack, and Foamy's stats get flipped back, so unfortunately, Foamy not going to be able to take out the Viscerous this turn. But did Matt O'Shea make a misplay here? I think not. He's going to draw instead. So exactly how we thought it was going to shake down. Great play on Matt's end. Took Organs Gaze the Galaxy. Shut off its effect. Oftentimes, you like to make that combo when Galaxy attacks you and you have an attack position Elestral. It becomes a little bit more advantageous because you can just have the Galaxy just get it destroyed. But we're gonna see Equal Links hit the field on Matt's end, and then he follows up with an Ambrosia to heal up a few spirits at this point in the Clash. A good timing for that. The real key here is, does he have a Demeter? Because a Demeter opens this up big time, and he has it! Matt O'Shea with the Demeter play. The Goddess of the Harvest is here, and she's ready to go. This is huge for him. If MBT does not have a Gorgon's Gaze, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble right now. The Nexus on to... Who is he gonna throw it on to? Matt O'Shea with an opportunity to gain tremendous card advantage here. Equaling's going to Nexus onto Viscerous, and he's going to be able to target one of the face down runes. Flip a coin. Which one are you going for, Matt? This is a big play here. Hits a Tsunami. MBT opts to not use it. That's big. He could have prevented the Equaling's from attacking this turn if he went for it. A little surprised he chose not to. But now Viscerous is going to be able to attack and deal some damage if it switches to attack position. Matt's thinking about his play, though, because he's going to want to use this Demeter buff to be able to hit over the Galaxy, uh, but he may also just choose to leave it there. There is still one back row on MBT's end, but without it being Tsunami now, Matt O'Shea may feel confident that he can push in this one, but it seems as though there's going to be an attack into the Foamy, and MBT is going to resolve that Foamy and get another Lestral out to the field, which very much so could be Mustation. However, the downside to the Mustation play is... It would have its stats swapped, but this is a really good play from MBT. He grabs Eddie, which shifts the Viscerous back to defense position. So massive from MBT. I do wonder what made Matt O'Shea choose to not attack with the Viscerous into the Foamy to ensure the effect gets hit off there to get another Viscerous out. But Eddie hits the field in perfect time. 
to shift him the Illustria debut, at least from me commentating, of Eddie, which I love to see for season three here. Eddie does only have one attack right now because of Galaxy, which is kind of funny. And here comes another Thunder Spirit. Is it going to be that Jolton that we know he's running that Atlantis? No, it's going to be the Boom Bat. Boom Bat is huge. A little surprised that MBT chose to not ascend into Boom Bat. There's this really interesting strategy that's been going around with Boom Bats and Poseidons, where you utilize Boom Bat, use Nexus onto it, uh, disenchant from Boom Bat to destroy something, and then on the following turn, you, you would still keep your Boom Bat alive with one Water Spirit. So, Matt is going to be forced to Gorgon's Gaze here. It was almost written in the stars that that was going to happen. If I'm him, I'm pulling a Spirit off my Viscerous, unless I have Altar of Stars, which he very well may have. It seems as though he's going to just pay two from his spirit deck to use that Gorgon's Gaze and shut down that Boom Bat, which means MBT is Batless here. And now he's going to have to figure out another way to clear the field of Viserys and Equilinks. And I just want to emphasize the danger of him going after that Viserys. If it gets shifted to attack position with an Altar of Stars, he is in a lot of trouble. It could swing momentum of this one very fast. He's going to go for the Atlantis, which is huge. That immediately turns Galaxy into a six attacker. But again, we need to remember that Eddie is flipped as well. So I'm curious how this is going to play out for MBT. If he's going to... Yeah, he's really thinking about this play. You can tell this is a really big one. He does attack with Galaxy. He's declared his target. Matt O'Shea is going to be thinking about it. And we're going to see how this one is going to play out. Equilinks does indeed go down, but it's worth noting that MBT does not have a way to clear the Viscerous at this point, which is really, really rough for him. Atlantis helps him out in some ways, but Eddie cannot beat Viscerous. Let's see. He goes for the attack. I Am I missing something? Eddie should be... Nope. He, he just goes swings and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, Matt O'Shea going to expend the draw here, looking for more cards in his hand. The Viscerous... Has a chance to do some serious work right now, though, if he can get it into attack position. Tell me he's got the Foley Forest. He does! Foley Forest changes the field. Viscera is sitting here with two spirits on it. He will shift to attack position. What is the final face down rune for MBT? If it's not like a shield, this could be really, really bad for, for MBT. Let's see. Matt O'Shea, three face downs. Here comes the Viscerous. Probably aiming for, I would think... You're going after the, the galaxy here um, just to get it off the field because it's, it's proven to be a little bit uh, problematic and you would get your second Viscerous out. Uh, but he does have a Tsunami. MBT saw all three Tsunamis in the early part of this game. If you remember when the Equilinks took out a Tsunami earlier, MBT was able to actually... Uh, well, he lost a Tsunami there and he had a second one face down, it seems. And he follows up with another Boom Bat. I don't think Matt O'Shea's got another Gorgon's Gaze. Boom Bat does Boom Bat things, and he's going to just blow up and take him out. And now it's the all-out offensive from MBT. Astrabit, Galaxy, and Eddie leap forward into the Spirit deck to Ratless, Demeter, and Matt O'Shea. Take a big blow of three Spirits of damage here, and that will bring Matt down to just five after that huge hit. Massive play there from MBT. Well done on his end. Utilizing those tsunamis, waiting for his time to strike. Galaxy, Eddie, and Rabbit haven't been challenged once this entire clash. Matt O'Shea in a tough spot. Here comes his Thunder Spirit. It's going to be an Astrabit. That's actually really, really big for him. Not only does that give him the flexibility of adding a new card from his deck, but it also means that he can potentially withstand the upcoming attacks from the Elestrals on MBT's side. Galaxy can't hit over it. Eddie can't hit over it. If you're MBT, though, you just need to find another Eddie. Eddie can change the position of Astrava to attack and make it a lot less effective. The addition of the Daybreak cards, Mudlet and Eddie, in, in, uh, have the, you know, add in a bunch of position swapping effects, which make cards like Astrava a little weaker. Still typically a three of in most decks, but not as strong as it once was because of those position changing effects moving things around mbt up significantly on spirits gonna drink up the nectar of the gods to draw two additional cards big plays there looking for those resources and atlantis would put him over the rabbit let's see if he's gonna go that way so would a mustation or an eddie he's got a water spirit is it gonna be the mustation 
It's gonna be the Eddie. Eddie is so big and Matt O'Shea shakes his head in disbelief. Gonna be forced to use a Gorgon's Gaze to stop this. Otherwise, his rabbit's going to attack. And the best way to stop a bunch of attacks in Elestrals is Tsunami. And that doesn't work against MBT. Let's see what Matt is cooking here. He's got a tough decision to make. Rabbit switches to attack position. MBT sets a rune face down. And now, the onslaught again. Galaxy into Rabbit. Let's see if Matt O'Shea have an answer. He does not. Rabbit is looking like it's gonna go down. Eddie, Ask Rabbit, and another Eddie. Hit Matt O'Shea for three spirits of damage, and Matt is down to just one. Maybe starting to think about what his game plan is gonna be for game two. This one's gonna be tough to come back on, but he does have spirits on field. He's got a Foley Forest. If he can play an Ambrosia here, there's a way for him to get back in this. Here comes a Spirit. It's gonna be the Equalings. He could pop a back row here. This is a five attack in Equalings. If he can figure out how to get over the, the Galaxy, he could be in decent shape. Those Eddies are pretty weak right now. He does go for the Nexus. What is the face down on MBT Zen? That could be the difference maker here. MBT gonna flip over a Gorgon's Gaze and stop Equalings from attacking. With Matt O'Shea at zero spirits, it seems as though MBT should be able to take this one. He's gonna draw. He's gotta hit over a six attack Equalings now. So wait a minute. That is a six attack Equalings because of Foley Forest. But MBT with the Earth Spirit on Galaxy to get him to six as well. What? Oh, baby. Galaxy with six attack now because of the Foley Forest. MBT teching those Earth Spirits in to run an Earthquake, the new card added to our limited list, and it's proven to be incredibly valuable here. As MBT's looking, there is a chance that Matt could play some different cards, but you can't PTA, you can't shield, you don't have the Spirits to do it. Galaxy looks to crash, Gorgons could work though, and he scoops, so MBT takes the first clash of this best of three behind Galaxy, and your boy, Eddie. Headed into the second clash, casters have the opportunity to dive into their 15 card side decks to enhance their strategies and customize their decks even further to face off against their opponents. Matt O'Shea had some really interesting side deck pieces. Boom Bats, Galaxies, and Vertilits round out most of his side deck, as well as Dense Fog. I tend to think those Galaxies and Boom Bats may see an appearance here in this second clash. MBT, on the other hand, his approach is a little bit different. He's got Veritaquas, Aphros, and Dratagua as well as the powerful Cryoblast. I'm not quite sure if Cryoblast is gonna be as impactful here, but I could see the Veritaquas and the Aphros Dratagua potentially making an impact in this game too. We'll see if these casters decided to utilize their side decks, but Matt O'Shea off to a great start with Astrabit. Let's see if MBT can mirror that with a rabbit of his own. Considering he hasn't played it yet, I'm thinking he is thinking. So let's see which spirit he's gonna grab and how he's gonna start this clash off. Oh, he has it. He has it. It's a rabbit showdown here in Clash 2. Astravit getting the same effect off. Gonna allow him to look at the top three cards of his deck and add one to his hand. The all-powerful Astravit. But again, I want to emphasize, I love how in this, in this matchup of Earth versus Water, both decks utilize a card that can really out Astravit in a unique way. Mudlet on the side of Earth and Eddie on the side of Water. They function a little bit differently, but ultimately their goal is the same. Disrupt the opponent's strategy and switch the positions of their Lestrals so that they can't do what they want to do. MBT sets two back row and Matt O'Shea looks to gain some card advantage here on field. MBT forced to really utilize multiple back row because of the threat of Equalinks and there it is again. Equalinks hits the field. Will it be paired with Demeter? Yes! The face down Demeter on Matt O'Shea's end. A great bluff. Gets Demeter out, and now he can immediately pressure one of those face down runes. The question is on MBT's end, did he find those tsunamis again? Here comes the Nexus. One of these cards is going down. MBT's losing something. It's gonna be the tsunami. Huge play on MBT. Able to save his rabbit for another turn. That's really big because the play there for Matt O'Shea most certainly was disenchant Demeter. Buff equal links, attack over rabbit and force MBT to have to use the other counter rune. But in this case, it looks like Matt O'Shea might have missed. Resting on your laurels is big. Astravid is going down as a result of that, as Astravid is the lowest enchanted Elestral on Matt O'Shea's side. 
the only way to play that resting on your laurels is to have your opponent be up by more than two spirits on field mbt had one whereas matt o'shea had five so pretty big difference there and mbt capitalizes on it with that laurels let's see though does he have an illustral to follow up he's got eddie but i think with this one you want to keep him in defense he's going to use his eddie to change the position of his rabbit and eddie is going to attack and take out the equalings with rabbit attacking directly i almost want to guarantee there's another tsunami face down for mbt just given the fact that uh, he put that rabbit in attack but let's see here matt o'shea down to 14 spirits with two on field he's gonna reach for his spirit deck what does he want something towards the bottom is he gonna cast out a galaxy no he's gonna go earth and he's gonna go equal links again another one wow back to back links for matt o'shea gonna utilize the nexus power of demeter once again and which one is he gonna target is he gonna hit another tsunami no he hits a shield so valuable for matt o'shea as MBT would have been able to bounce the equal links back and burn those spirits on it. But instead, Matt O'Shea probably feels a little bit more confident being able to attack forward. And you can simply attack him to the rabbit if you don't want to uh, crash. But he will use the spirit on Demeter to allow him to get over the eddy, it seems. I don't know if I... Oh, wow, MBT with the double shield. I was going to say, I don't know if I agree with that play. I think I would probably go after the rabbit there just because it's so hard to beat. You have a free chance to take it out, but uh, it doesn't end up mattering. MBT shields it, and he lives to see another day. MBT throughout this best of three has been able to find his counter runes in pairs. Shield of Achilles and Tsunami proven to be nice duos when faced up against Equalinks. Here comes a Foamy. It's gonna be met with a Poison Tipped Arrow, which means it's not gonna be able to deal any damage this turn as it will be dropped down to zero attack after the minus two drop from PTA. But Eddie and Astrabit can attack directly to deal two spirits of damage, and Matt O'Shea will most likely expend a spirit in the end phase to take out the Foamy and effectively shut down its potential search effect, which MBT showed to be very useful by searching out Eddie in that game one of this best of three. So there's going to be the two spirits lost on Matt's end. One for Eddie, one for Rabbit, and then we move to end phase, and it looks like he chooses to not take out the Foamy, or did he forget? Maybe he chose to leave it there. He's going to go Spectrus onto the field. So maybe that was his plan all along. I I guess I'm a little confused why you PTA the Foamy if you're not going to destroy it at the end phase. I I don't know what happened there. Maybe that was a, 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 a mishap on Matt's end. He does find the Laurels. He gets a free pop on something. I think if you're Matt, you probably just take out the Foamy here and then attack into the Rabbit. And then you're just facing down Eddie. So, honestly, Matt O'Shea is able to flip this round. I think he did misplay that PTA. And that may prove to, to bite him later on in this clash. Because he could have an empty field right now uh, if he played that just a little bit differently. But ultimately, nonetheless, Spectre is on the field facing down an Eddie. Spectre is a four attacker that gets plus one attack for every suppressed Celestial on the field. And when it enters battle with an opponent's Celestial, it gets that uh, it suppresses them and then gets a plus one attack. So... Very, very good card against many threats like Galaxy, but not going to do it against Mustation because Mustation can come out here, expend a Water Spirit, become a six attacker, take out Spectrus, and now Eddie is going to hit for one Spirit of Damage into Matt O'Shea's Spirit deck, and MBT starts to solidify a bit of a lead here going into the middle part of this clash. Matt O'Shea looking for answers. And don't forget, Mustation can respond to casts with its effect, here comes a rabbit into defense. Obviously, MBT won't respond to that. MBT able to, or I'm sorry, Matt O'Shea able to look at the top of his deck, maybe searching out an Ambrosia here from the top of his deck. That consistency could keep him in the game, getting a few extra spirits. Let's see, he does grab a confident card choice there. Gonna shuffle things up, and let's see if he ended up getting anything. He might be looking for back row support. Mustation's very threatening in this context, and MBT actually has a really good deck to deal with cards like rabbit. Because you have the Mustation that can turn into a six attacker, you have the Eddies that can change positioning. So a lot of different options there. But Matt will set a card in the back row. MBT going to draw for his turn. And let's see if he can find that Galaxy. It's going to be the Boom Bad. He might not even need it. Boom Bad hits the field, and he's going to do what Boom Bad does once again, it seems. Is he going to boom? He's going to boom. Boom Bad will boom, and Rabbit goes down. So instead of expending the Spirit from Mustation, He's just going to use the Boom Bat and will attack. 
Again, I'm a little surprised to see that he chooses to not just ascend Eddie to, to, uh, into Boombat. I think you can kind of accomplish a very similar situation. Then you threaten Boombat next turn. But depending on what you have in your hand, it may not matter. At the end of the day, he's up six spirits with two on field. So Matt is going to be looking for some sort of a comeback here. And with this Earth deck, the best way to do it is probably Eviscerous. That's the card you're looking for right now. An Earth Spirit into a Moss Station. That comes out with six attack because of its effect. Getting plus two attack for each Earth Enchanting Spirit on it. But it does get forced into defense position during the end phase. And Ambrosia, big play there from Matt O'Shea. That Ambrosia is crucial. If you're Matt, you're going to want to look to take out that Eddie this turn. Uh, or actually, you probably want to go after the... Uh, I think you actually go after the Eddie. Right, so you attack the Eddie, you try to take that out, you go to defense, and you force MBT to expend to get Mustation's effect if he doesn't have a second Elestral. But let's see what Matt ends up doing here. He did get that Ambrosia up to five spirits, choosing to not attack, actually, which I find interesting. I can I can understand why. He's going to stay to not attack, which means that he'll stay in attack position, which means that MBT is going to be forced to try to attack over him or crash into him with Mustation. And if you're Matt O'Shea, if you have a way to stop that uh, Mustation from doing that, you might be able to hang around just a little bit longer. MBT choosing to expend to draw here. And he's thinking about his play, debating his moves. He's going to go Water Spirit, change the stats of Mustation. I agree with this play for sure. Mustation's able to attack into the Moss Station. This is going to be a crash if no response. Does Matt have an answer? He's thinking about it. He is going to cast Gorgon's Gaze here and stop the attack. A brilliant play from Matt O'Shea to hang in this clash. Mustation's attack does not get through to Moss Station. And thus, Eddie not able to break him either. Here comes an opportunity to come back. It's the Viscerous we were talking about. This is the card that Matt needed as Viscerous can take out Eddie and get another Viscerous to the field. We don't see MBT activating the effect. Does he have the Tsunami? He does! Devastating! for Matt O'Shea, Tsunami, and no back row on Matt's end, which means that MBT is almost certainly hitting the Spirit deck this turn, or at the very least, clearing the field. Oh, he's got another Eddie. He's gonna go Eddie here. Eddie, oh no, Galaxy, even better. Galaxy is even better, and an Earthquake. The cherry on top. This one might just be over. You have the, the Galaxy take out the Mustation. Mustation. Hits directly, Eddie hits directly, and MBT takes this one. 2-0 in an emphatic win here in Illustriad Season 3. MBT repping water, taking him down and moving to top 16, while Matt O'Shea heads to the loser's bracket, representing Demeter and the Earth Pantheon. Stay tuned for tomorrow for another epic clash of Illustriad Season 3, and don't forget to back us on Kickstarter. You can check out the links in the description below.